thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming and congratulations on your release of your second season. Um, so for people who aren't maybe already familiar and they haven't delved into to the series yet, maybe you can start by giving us like your brief um, synopsis of what the new Legends of Monkey is all about. Uh, okay, so I play, hi, I'm Chai. I play um, the Monkey King, who was born from a stone egg and has uh, all-compassing, almighty powers that is completely undefeatable. Um, very stronger yeah, than Just saying how good you are and awesome you are and stuff. Very brief. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely, it's it's definitely stronger than Igzi. Um, I mean that's it. That's that's really. And he, he takes on. <laughs> he takes on <laughs> um, he takes yeah. They take on we take on demons as a as a team with Tripper Tucker, Sandy, and Pixie, and uh, we get into a lot of mischief along the way. Mm -hmm. Um, a what a disgraced god has to redeem himself by recovering oh, go the scrolls. Pool. Yeah, well, she asked for some. No, she didn't ask for like your your dating profile. Yeah, but I... okay, okay. To recover skulls, scrolls from around an ancient fantasy world, with the help of his friends and his handsome sidekick Pigsy. Cool, it's great. That was yeah, great. That's it. And really what? What was it about this series that attracted you to it? What was it? Was it, was it your individual characters? Was it the, the storyline? Being involved in like a, a big fantasy production? What was it that was the biggest appeal for you guys? Uh, for me, I think this season was the writing. Um, it, was, it was a lot more condensed and, and um, actually it was a lot more sentimental too than the first season. The first season was great, but this season we really touched um, on the hearts of each character towards, especially towards the back end of the season you start, we started off with, um, you know, our faults, our character faults, and then we start to unravel them. And as you go on, you start to reveal a bit more of the heart of the character. So, um, and, and along the way, the, the, the writing was so it, it effortlessly um, told that with a lot of humor and, or comedy along, along the way. So I think that was one of the, my, my biggest highlights was of trying to approach this with, um, with also knowing what the tone is from the first season. Because in the first season, in basically any show, you get to, it's hard to find what the tone is. And, and, and then, you know, when you get a second season, you kind of know, you already hit the ground running, you know what the tone is, and then you get to play a bit more with character development. So that was one of the most um, exciting things that I had going into this season. Mm -hmm. For me, um, uh, was well, I, I attracted to me for doing for that. Attracted me to doing it in the first place was um, just being part of a fantasy kung fu thing. Like I love kung fu uh, <laughs> TV and movies, and and like a you know like I'm I was like I've always wanted to be part of it, but you know like as time got on and I got older, I was like, well, I guess that that ship sailed, and then you know like. You can be this kung fu guy. I was like, what? And so like then, and we, you know, we we're doing stunt training, and I was doing kung fu in the morning, and then doing stunt rehearsals. It was just a, so much fun. It was so much fun just playing, like going to work and like getting taught kung fu by professionals. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, and being part of like a fantasy, fun family show. Like I loved action stuff, kung fu action stuff when I was a kid. Um, and it feels like I'm almost making TV stuff that I would love as a kid. Um, and it's really positive. All the messages are really cool. The cast is really diverse. The awesome female characters, strong, you know, it's, it's, it's just an awesome, just an awesome fun thing to be part of. So, and it was so, so cool to be part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you were hitting there upon a few things. Like, I think what really comes out is this brilliant tone to it, you know, it is a fantasy film, but it's not taking itself too seriously. There's a lot of humor yeah. in there. And doing this yeah. quite clever thing, which I think is quite hard of appealing to men and women, but also kids and adults. And so, you know, was that something very important to you guys and something that you kind of like really felt that you were achieving while, while you were shooting and stuff? 
Yeah, I, w I was actually quite excited to, I mean, this is a dream, this is a dream role for me, for sure. I'm, I've always been a fan of um, Jackie Chan. He is the master of uh, action and, and comedy. And to be able to do something similar along the lines of, of um, you know, a Jackie Chan-esque um, show, which, by the way, he did, he did play in a version of Journey to the West, um, I think he played Trip Attacker. So um, anyway, besides the point, I, I massive dream role for me. So just approaching it was, uh, yeah, it was, was felt like I, it, it wasn't real. Um, I wasn't in reality. It just was a, you know, the first season I was like, what is happening? I'm in New Zealand filming, actually also a massive fan of Lord of the Rings. So any kind of fantasy show we're filming in, in places where I think they filmed parts of Lord of the Rings, like at Bethel's, did they ever film? Yeah, they, did, would have, you, they filmed everywhere. I mean, they filmed everywhere. Yeah, they did they filmed they everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's the Helm's Deep is over there. Yeah. yeah. Did they though at Bethel's? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bethel's, yeah, 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 100%, Bethel's yeah. Beach is one of the most beautiful spots in, in Auckland for me. Um, and to film in, in something so um, spectacular, just felt, it felt like I wasn't even on earth, you know? So, um, dream come true. Yeah, I mean, I mean there's a bit of beaches, so you gotta look around, but um, I, I'm from New Zealand, so like, we're we quite used to that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I um, it is definitely, it's not something that I, thought I'd be into as much as I am, um, being into something, for something that appeals to both adults and kids. Um, but since recently becoming a dad, uh, it's um, definitely something I'm, I'm glad that I'll be happy for my kids to see. I've, I've had a baby each season, um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that up. If, if we get another season, this is how far I'm, ha I'm going to need to get a bigger house um, if we have any more seasons. But um, yeah, it was just so cool to make something that I can show my daughter and my son. Um, and my daughter's actually in it. Um, it got, I managed to sneak her into a, a couple of shots um, as the baby did. It's picked up by Chai. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. And I think one of the things that really comes across as well, and it's kind of like key to make it all work, is this great chemistry between you guys, as well as Lucienne and Emily. So was that like, you hang out a lot outside of shooting and you know how did you make sure that works i guess with four of you maybe it's slightly more challenging than just like than two so it kind of like that dynamic needed to work usually in 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 shows the main um the main cast kind of uh they kind of venture off into their own little tangents and and do you know um scenes between just like shorthand between two two of the characters with with this we got to do a lot of all four of us in pretty much every scene so we built the chemistry as as we went on but josh and i for the a, a lot for the most part we used to we used to hang out at this um dumpling house <laughs> remember that noodle <laughs> best dumplings in auckland what was it called again it's called the, that noodle house, house. It's just called Noodle House, I think. Oh no, the Eden Noodles. Of, it's called Eden Noodles. Eden Noodles. Eden Noodles. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, we just as soon as we finish, we go to the to the dumpling house, and um, I'm pretty sure Josh was sick of me by the end of the shoot. No, it was great. It was it was so fun. Like I mean, um, it, the second season, I, we literally had two babies, so it was, it was a bit tougher for me to hang out. Yeah. But, um, they're, they're such lovely people. Like I, it was so so fun. It was really fun on set. It was always fun, and you know there were times when we got sick of each other, and um, and because it's just quite stressful, you know, like and it's physical, and your brain. Even even though like our job is to stand somewhere and say some words, like sometimes we get out of concentration, and like you're just tired. You just get quite cranky, and like we drive each other up, but we'd, we'd always be there to support each other. So we became like our little family, really. Um, because we were always getting shuttled around together, driven around, we'd hang out with each other, and we just got on. It was great. And, you know, we'll be friends. We'll be friends forever. Thanks, yeah. 
And you're mentioning there being like a fan of like Kung Fu and stuff like the, the stunts are amazing and the choreography. Um, Thank you. I'm just understanding you have to like do like quite a bit of training. So like how, how was it preparing for that? Um, yeah, we had, we had a, a month um, of pre-production leading up to the um, principal photography. So the, the first day of filming. We had a month of training with um, Glenn Levy and um, Steve McQuillan, who are like veterans in the stunt world, absolute veterans. And this season, we, we focused more on Wushu, which is more of a stylistic Chinese style of martial arts. Um, and it, it, was, it was quite hard because I play two characters this season. So there, there was one moment where I ended up having to fight myself. So yeah, it, it, just approaching that was, was overwhelming because that, that particular fight scene was like a minute long. I think it was like a minute. So when I got to see um, the stunt coordinators after having quarried uh, a little fight, the, the, a minute long fight scene, I was watching it going, so I have to learn both those sides. <laughs> I have to learn that side and that side. Okay, cool. With how, how long do I have? We're shooting it in like two weeks. Great, okay. <laughs> um, you know, um, because yeah, we, that fight scene was only choreed, uh, choreographed about halfway through filming. So they didn't even have that ready in pre-production. So it, it's, a, it's a kind of a, as you go on the fly kind of thing sometimes. And, you know, when you're playing the lead, you don't really have a lot of time for anything else. So you can't, you, you're scrounging around for time to just even rehearse for, for certain things. So I had like two weeks before that fight. Um, it, gets, it gets tough, but it's, it's fun. It's a, it's a really fun process. Mm -hmm. The sense that, like, I mean, I, I'm assuming you, the stunts in the second season are so they're really up the ante. Like it's, it's the, we we literally hit the ground. We're, there's just so many, there's so many bloody stunts through the entire thing, and we we all like, I think we did the the, the bulk of our own stunts. <clears throat> um, and uh, the training was it was so much fun through that training, but like try tries doing wire work, he's doing flips, he's flicking around all over the place. His legs are all over the place like a like a monkey spider, and um. It's really amazing. It's really fun. It's, it's incredible to watch. I've got more of a laid back sort of pub brawling style. So <laughs> I don't do it. It's like sort of acrobatic. So it's a character thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it was so much fun to learn all that stuff and, you know, wake up each morning and go and train to the council. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was great. And, and what about like, you know, all these immense costumes and the sets? Like I believe, you know, you had all the live trees. This temple that's oh, yeah. an ankle what like how was it you know being in those settings and you know did it sort of like help you I guess in a way imagine that you are actually it's not like doing everything green screen you know more be immersed mm. in, in the world you're in we actually didn't have a lot of green screen stuff this season which was surprising because um the first season we had like a whole week of it towards the back end of the shoot this season um amazing to note that they built an entire forest inside a studio and i haven't seen i haven't really seen that before um and i don't know if that it's if that's like if that's a common thing because it's quite expensive um and just just even even that was phenomenal the forest was huge inside the studio the mass there's a it's a massive studio and the entire studio they built um uh, a forest inside it and so you you would get lost in it um it, it, was, so it was way better was, than yeah oh sorry you, you, you. oh that yeah. with um with the the costumes included you, you you're completely immersed into like into fantasy mm. So, it, yeah, it was they, an amazing they, experience. They got, um, a costume designer got an Emmy for it, for that costume, for the first series. Um, yeah. And it, it was way, it was, it was way better having the real sets. And of course, we'd go on location to actual forests as well. Um, but it was quite weird, you know, because it would be like, 
they'd lock the sort of time of day. So you'd go in and you'd just be, it would be like six o'clock in the evening for the entire day. So you lose your mind. So you'd, And because it was yeah. winter, you'd yes, go into yeah. the studio in the dark, you'd be in a forest that wasn't real. And then you'd like, you'd, you'd be walking through the forest and you'd hit like a, a, an iron wall. And then you'd walk through the forest and you'd hit like a tin wall. And you'd be like, well, you'd open a door to a toilet. It was very strange. Um, but it was, um, it looks amazing. They're incredible. Well, they're very tricky, very sneaky, the, uh, the, the art department and the uh, filming people. Oh, amazing. 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 Absolutely yeah. talented. The cinematographer. I don't know where too. to begin. Where, where would you, how would you even begin that? I'm like, <laughs> get a, get a, get I've, a got kind people of I've got people for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously. But just, it's just a lot of work. And some, yeah. It's amazing, yeah. And they'd have to like keep the trees alive. So there'd, there'd be a guy that came in and like watered the trees like every couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. <laughs> and you know, coming to kind of like obviously it is kind of fantastical, there's a lot of humor in there, but there is this kind of, you know, underlying point maybe made about sort of the dark side of humanity, if you like, kind of ruling the roost at this moment in time. And you were talking about there, like, you know, having these really strong female characters and things like that. So do you think there is something for people to take away kind of beyond just entertainment, like some great messages there or some reflection on how things are at the moment? You know, are we being overrun by demons and so on? Um, <laughs> I mean, we definitely are. <laughs> um, absolutely. I think there's, there's, you can always take um, away your own kind of metaphor or your own kind of, um, you know, the underlining message of what maybe you're going through um in your life or whoever it is i think the the main thing that i wanted to not steer clear of but just just to to, to maintain the focus on the humanity as, aspect of 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 just um the posit the positivity shines through th through the negativity if you're if you're constantly positive um you'll find a way to to overcome any any obstacle and it was it's we focus on a lot of the, the, the humanity, you know, rather than trying to highlight a political thing or anything like that. I, I wanted to steer clear from the, the political realm. And the thing is like, if you do kind of um, focus on the truth or, or, or like the humanity aspect that shines through into the political realm anyway, and, and people will take what they want from that. Do you know what I mean? That's their kind of, interpretation or metaphor that they can take from from this and there's always something you know that you can take from from this especially this season i think this season we were a lot more comfortable in our skins and our characters um which uh heightened the 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 nuances um of of the storytelling and the character development which um just makes it a lot more clearer for you know for the audience to to take away whatever they want from 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 this, you know. I mean, I think it's a it's a classic good versus evil story um, with really strong themes of friendship and stuff that is really easy to relate to. But in, in these unprecedented times, it's just great. It's a good thing to watch. It's a good thing to see. Yeah, well, it's, it's a good thing yeah, exactly. To feel that. It's fun. And um, it's, it's pure and, uh, there's a it's pure escapism, it's fantasy, but it's also right. Like we all, all the heroes stand up for what's right because we, we exactly, you know, yes, yeah, but, yeah. Um, there's a, there's a phrase, there's a phrase that the monk Tributaka says, which is hope must never die, and that's that's what we all chase. That's what we all chase for the series. What the hell am I talking about? No, actually, I, I know what you're saying. I, I, kind of, I was thinking, I was actually thinking about that. Um. um just the other day, I was like, hope is one of the most important things that, that we have as, as humans, if, you know, that it, I don't know, I, 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 this, this is, um, obviously we're getting into the, the philosophical, the deep philosophical side of, of it, but I think hope, hope is so important. If you lose hope, you just, you lose motivation. You just don't want to do anything. So I think, in 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 telling that story of like the hope must never die hopefully um people find um 
you know, hope in their, their life and, and don't lose that motivation in whatever they're doing. You know what I'm saying, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> we here, got man. it. We got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so sorry. It's... I, I had I had this whole thing that I was I was in my mind, and then all Let's of a sudden it's gone. But you don't got. We're getting through this. We're getting through. It's a crazy time. A crazy <laughs> time in the world. Well, I think it's a good note to finish on. I think I'm out of time, and yeah, I guess during <laughs> deepest darkest lockdown, <laughs> hope will never die. <laughs> it will get us through. I think that's a great yeah. message. So yeah, um, great. Make a seem sane. Yeah, good, good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me. Hey, and, no um, worries. No, sounds really like you good. had a really wonderful time making it, and I'm sure everyone's really going to yeah, enjoy it. It was really it's fun. Like, it was really, really fun. And like, yeah. we, we, we were all really our great friends, and I hope that should hopefully come across when you watch it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. And congratulations um, again, and, and best of luck with the next things you work on. <laughs>